Hello world, it's Fredrickson here, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast from javascript.info, the modern JavaScript tutorial. We have just come through objects, the basics, and if you're following along with my playlist, thank you. That's how these YouTubes are going to make the most sense to you. In javascript.info, the next few lessons really get into objects as compared to other programming languages. For example, the subjects of garbage collection, the symbol type, the keyword this, object to primitive conversion, and the constructor operator, and the new keyword, those are all very common subjects in other object-oriented programming languages such as C++, Java, and C Sharp. If JavaScript is your first programming language, I really don't think you need to get into those topics quite yet. So I'm going to be skipping those, but I want to point them out in case you're coming from that object-oriented background, you're going to want to go through those lessons because you already understand those concepts and you'll understand where the author is coming from. He's trying to compare and contrast JavaScript to what you already know. But because at my school, we teach JavaScript often as a first programming language in relationship to what you need to know as a web developer, I'm going to skip those compare and contrast subjects that are great to know about probably premature if JavaScript is your first programming language for web development, and skip on up to section five data types, where we learn more about numbers, strings, arrays, and array methods. These lessons 5.1 through 5.5 are very valuable. But to make sure we are on the same page before we get into data types section five, I want to do a short catch-up review lesson on syntax. And by syntax, I mean the punctuation, and the rules by which the language is written. For example, have you ever considered how many different ways parentheses are used in JavaScript? They're used to declare a new function. In this case, the function has no arguments, so the parentheses are just right behind the new function name. Parentheses are also used in regular algebraic expressions to indicate or clarify what you want to have happen first. And then this little function called calc salary, I've got a variable named regular assigned to 40, overtime assigned to 1, rate assigned to 10, and then I'm going to calculate the total hourly wage someone would earn with those variables by multiplying their regular hours, 40 times the rate, $10 an hour, and then add that to the overtime hours, which is 1, times the hourly rate, and times time and a half, 1.5. So in this little expression, I've used parentheses just in the normal way you would use them in an algebraic expression to force certain parts of the expression to evaluate first or to merely clarify the expression. Here's a third way I'm using parentheses in JavaScript. As the expression that evaluates true or false behind an if or else if statement. And in this case, if overtime is greater than one, then we're going to console log overtime. Let's make overtime two to make sure that that evaluates true. Here's yet a fourth way I'm using parentheses. Console is a built-in object that's available to us if we're working in a modern browser. Log is a method of the console that will spit out information into the console. In this case, I'm going to spit out the string over time if this evaluates true. And in this case, I'm using parentheses behind a method. All built-in methods will have parentheses behind them. That's why it's very easy in JavaScript to identify the difference between a property and a method because a method is always followed by parentheses. Sometimes those parentheses need a piece of information in order to calculate, and sometimes they don't. In this case, in console log, it's not going to log out anything unless I feed it a string or a variable or an expression to log out. So I have this little test42.js file connected to this object's HTML file with this script, and I've got the object's file loaded into my Chrome browser here. I just did a control O in my Chrome browser and opened up that file directly into the browser. I'm going to refresh it and I'm going to run the calc salary function. Now notice if I just type in calc salary and hit enter, unlike other languages, just saying the function name is not running the function. Calc salary is actually a variable name and this is what that variable contains. It contains all the statements of the function. To run a function, I've got to type in that function name followed by parentheses. That's the only way functions and methods are going to run in JavaScript. And once I press enter, my overtime variable is greater than one. So console log overtime appears and the return of total, which is calculated as regular times 10, that's 400, plus overtime 2 times 10, that'd be 20, 
times 1.5, that'd make it 30. Those two values are added together into the total variable, and I'm returning total, and that's why 430 spits out. So parentheses are used in five different ways in JavaScript. To define a function, use an expression to group or clarify the expression, just like algebra, behind an if or else if statement to contain an expression that evaluates true or false, behind all methods, and to run a function. Now let's look at some more syntax that can be tricky. Here's my array from my previous screencast, and notice that arrays are always created with square brackets. Arrays are ordered lists, so this is prof 0, prof position 1, prof index 2. And when I speak to those pieces of the prof array, I use square brackets as well. Objects, on the other hand, are created with curly braces. Now you've seen curly braces before. Curly braces surround every code block, whether it's an if statement or whether it's an entire function. Within an object, when I assign a value to a key, I don't use the equal sign, the assignment operator. I use a colon. It looks very much like an assignment operator. In fact, you can think of that as an assignment operator. The F name key is assigned the value of Lisa. The L name key is assigned the value of Fred. The title key is assigned the value of friend. The greeting key is assigned to this function, and that makes it a method of the object. And the last thing I want to point out is the use of the comma. We use commas to separate out our different index items in a array, and we use a comma to separate out our separate key value pairs in an object. Oftentimes we'll see that last key value pair end in a comma in an object just to get ready in case we decide to do yet another key value pair and then we don't forget it. And if your array has very long values, you might want to write it in a vertical fashion, just like you did your object. But how you indent and position and style your arrays and your objects will really be up to your style guide. Typically, in JavaScript, we put that final curly brace on its own line, and we typically put the opening curly brace at the end of the line prior to the statement where the code block starts, which is somewhat different than in C++ and some other languages where you typically put that opening curly brace on its own line, but it can be either place and it will work fine. Again, consult your style guide. There are very few places, however, where you can break a line in JavaScript. Two of the most common places are after a comma when you're listing items in an array or in an object, or when you're doing a long expression, you can also break that expression on the operators after the assignment statement, the equal sign. Thank you for letting me review the syntax. I actually had one student in class that thought I was saying syntax, and syntax is only in Las Vegas. Thank you. You can laugh now.